So, yes, I'm, I'm diving right into this. And uh, sorry for those who have seen something quite similar before. But as we are talking about theater de documentation, and we're trying to talk about it in the context of time and space, I just wanted first to establish some, some basic categories, uh, some banal uh, understandings. So you have something that might look like a fake theater text on, on the left uh, with some stage instructions and people start talking. And if you think of a, of a fairly classical uh, theater with a the, with the fourth open wall, you have an audience and there are some people on stage. And there you have Kim and there you have Jan. And the point is uh, this fundamental difference in space understanding is that the relationship between Kim and Jan in the text is identified by the name to the right of and not by their location in the space of the text. On the theater stage, on the other hand, the relationship is based on where they are located in physical space and it might have significant meaning. Um, so in the text, it's our understanding that establish a conceptual, conceptual understanding or mind understanding of the relationship between two persons on stage is their physical location. Um, which also means uh, that the locations are there on stage, but they are not a direct copy of locations uh, from what we uh, assume to be the real world, because there are a lot of conventions here. These three group, uh, these three people are talking together, Jan, Kim and the clown. Uh, then you have two other people, two wolves or two other entities on stage, they are talking to each other, but they are not noticed by the three people, which is, of course, totally unrealistic in one sense. But on the other hand, because they are speaking to each other, also these two wolves, in a way, heard by the audience, so it has to be heard by the others. But it's a theater convention that these two people are seeing the other, but the others are not seeing them. And then you have a number of other categories, like the classic Greek choir, uh, the direct addressing, uh, and so on. So these are just some, some basic categories which form some of the basis for the difference between theater and text and theater as performance. A text is two-dimensional spatial. Uh, performance is moving human bodies in four dimensions. Of course, there are radio theaters and, and, and other things, but this is a common situation. The text is sequ sequential, one-dimensional in acquisition very often, but the two-dimensional structure is used for structure. And this is important in theater texts, of course. Uh, you look at the structure, even if you don't understand the language, and you can see that it's a theater text and understand some of the things. This is a speech act, this is a stage description, uh, stage instructions, and so on. Uh, in the performance, you have a free eye movement, which is, of course, has a focus on where the events take place, but in principle, it's, it's free and going all directions. Space is represented by language expressions in, in, in the theater text mostly with very rare exceptions uh, in uh, performance of course language expressions are always used to refer from the st space of the stage to the space of the action but also space itself is used for this representation uh, the reading locations it is independent from the represented space uh, which basically means that you're reading a book and normally a book theater book is not connected to where the represented space is. Uh, for other kinds of text, this is of course the, the case um, uh, with inscriptions and so on. Um, and the theater as performance are sometimes located, and you see it sometimes in Greek theater, that uh, the presence of, of, of cities around the theater actually is used in the play. Uh, but this is not always done. It's just a, an affordance in, 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 in performance. Um, okay, now I will give a short example how text is transferred and realized in theater in comparison to film and how this is on the one hand influenced by the space and affecting the space on the other hand. Next slide, please. Um, theater is more influenced by words than film. Um, what is said with words in theater can be shown with images in film. Um, I chose this picture to give an example. Uh, when processes are shown on a uh, theater stage that cannot be seen by the theater audience, the spoken text has the function of explaining what is happening. Here it would uh, explain what is under the microscope, for example. 
uh, the film, which can show something to the audience with a close-up, can do this without the verbal explanation. The film, um, through the choice of perspective and also the frame, um, as well as the ability to connect different spaces and times, has a focus on the image uh, compared to the theater stage and the spoken words. Next slide, please. Um, in modern theater, the text is usually seen as the point of departure for a performance and is used as the basis for the staging, which is always happening somewhere. This space on the stage is also presented in performative arts, which are not based on written text, as for example, clown shows. Um, the stage can be a constructed one or it can be another space temporarily made into a stage, like a street corner, an apartment or whatever. The border between performance and real life is usually, but not always, clear to the participants. Um, the space off stage is the fictional space depicted in the play. This space is never directly seen, even if on stage, uh, uh, even if the on stage space can be quite similar to these uh, non seen space. It's the same type of space that uh, one can see through see, not see, uh, through reading fictional texts or listening to oral stories, for example. So uh, when we're talking about theater documentation, it has to exist in this complex space where we are not documenting the performance in the way that we are documenting the text. The text is there in the collection, the performance is not. Uh, so we have to find a way to represent the performance in a different way from using, uh, use it from what you do with text preservation, text presentation. Um, uh, and we have to answer questions such as what is the unit? So do we document one evening in the theater, one season, uh, one staging? Uh, is it the event we are uh, documenting or the experience of the event or both? And it means that we need to make a lot of choices and find ways to encircle the non-existing center of the documentation, which is the performance itself, which is never there in the theater collection. Uh, this also connects to the other space, time and actors, which is actually theater history. Uh, so the history of stage performances, uh, how they were organized, how the director and the instructor and the actors and actresses work together and so on. Um, the theater collection at the University of Cologne was funded by Kai Nielsen in the 1920s. Um, Nielsen received the first professorship for theater studies at the University of Cologne in 1924. And his institute's collection of historical and contemporary theatrical material was intended to serve as a visual and research material for his students. Um, but in addition, he also aimed to combine research uh, and the public in uh, one theater museum. So this collection is very heterogeneous and there are a, a, a whole bunch of different objects. Next slide, please. Um, 3D scans of selected objects from this theater collection in Cologne, uh, which is one of the largest, uh, largest of its kind in Europe, have been made available for research purposes through the online repository Compact. That's what you can see here. Um, there's a significant potential for improving access to these artifacts through creative use of digital tools. Um, uh, the artifacts in this collection come from different cultural contexts um, and their significance vary, of course. Uh, interactivity enables users to understand better the value of these artifacts as well as their intended use. Um, standardized metadata are documented and accessible and annotations, that what you, is what you can see here, uh, also enrich the data set. Um, so through the annotations, a system for interactive exploration and embedding um, is established and this can also be used for storytelling. Um, the objects can be interlinked and used as sources referring to performances marked, um, uh, uh, also marked by text. Uh, linking and ranking annotations enables move, moving through, uh, from one annotation to another, which implies a movement through space in time. That allows new ways of uh, annotation-based storytelling where annotations can be used for presentations in which movement in VR and R applications is embedded. Um, exactly. Shall I move on? 
Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, Oops. Sorry. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No worries. There, sorry. Yeah, okay. Here you can see one uh, of the use cases. Uh, this is a Japanese theater mask, which can have different perceived expressions depending on the angle of the head position of the actor wearing them. So moving the mask changes the expression. Um, if the actor wearing the mask looks downward, the mask looks sorrowful. If it's straight or looking upwards, the mask looks angry or demoni uh, demonical. Um, and uh, here we see a mask which is made from one piece of wood, uh, so the form cannot be changed. Thank you. Good. So uh, I will then, for, for interest of time, just quickly go through some, some uh, last uh, points. Um, so, uh, in digital collections in, in the theater uh, collection setting uh, has the convergence, you see, in all other kinds of, of uh, settings. Um, and it has also with the digital potential of bringing the objects into movement, as we saw with the, with the mask example. Uh, that means that we are modeling theater, but on the other hand, we also have the, the network structures and what we need to model theater history, which is not so modeling a performance and modeling theater history are connected but different things. So we are re uh, representing performances but also the production of performances and need different tools and different methodologies for that. And in both settings, performance and text meet. But this is not saying that performance is always text based, it's just that they are, of course, very often connected. So, and then of course, it's a question of data and source, and um, that was it. Thank you. <laughs>